the, the landfill that found the people, not the people settling near the landfill. Right, Honorable Speaker and colleagues, it is saddening. Just as we joined the parliament, this particular parliament, in September 2021, I petitioned the parliament and government on this floor and informed the House and government of the worsening state and condition of the landfill. Actually, a few days after, I went to the landfill with the State Minister for Kampala and the Deputy Exec Executive Director for Kampala. Water flooding from the landfill had taken, taken away people's houses. Part of our demands was for KCC to station standby engineers on site so that they could have avert the flooding, maintain the landfill, and regularly caution or alert the, the neighbors in the event of any risk. Unfortunately, on Saturday, with no alert, with no proof of a standby cases a engineer or technical person, it is reported and narrated by the witnesses. Not even as reported by the media. The witnesses are reporting that it was a blast that blew up the sand and garbage in the air with the smoke and then it came down covering people's houses. That's the narrative from the residents. They even continue to allege that for months they saw Chinese contractors installing pipes in the, in the heap of garbage because there were two heaps. There's a new heap and the old heap. Now the old heap is the one where the Chinese installed alleged pipes. And when the locals questioned, these Chinese briefed them, according to the narrative from the, village, the, the locals, that they are extracting gas. KCCA must come out open. What were the Chinese doing? We don't want to imagine and assume that it was a mere, a mere slide by the landfill. There are more likelihood that it was either an accident or an intentional mistake or negligence by either the Chinese or even KCCA. And even if it was the contractors, it was in full knowledge of KCCA. No one has mentioned that, not even in the Prime Minister's statement. Equally, when this tragedy happened, right honorable speaker and colleagues, I beg for your indulgence because I'm the area MP, and, I, I, and I, I, I'm sorry for taking long, much as all of you have issues to, to add. Colleagues, when this tragedy befell, it is the locals who did the first and initial rescue, using hands, holes, and pangas. We provided them with equally gloves. And every person reported to have been retrieved alive was actually retrieved by the locals, not government, not cases, and not even police. When police came, they came with hundreds of servicemen, some in uniform, some ununiformed. By the time I arrived, I was there with the minister for disaster. The police themselves and, the, and, and, and some, some of their servicemen in plain clothes tried even to stop me from accessing. Of course, they had the prior knowledge that for us, we wanted to find out what were the Chinese doing. We wanted to dig out and show, identify the positions that had been reported by the locals. As we speak now, let us speak and colleagues, part of the complaint we are having on the ground, true, there are so many agencies on the ground. And true, we have held the meetings, both with the minister, the prime minister, and so many other agencies. But one of the concerns that has remained a constant is that the rescue operations are only done during the day. From Saturday, it is even saddening that people had to die. They were buried beyond the garbage. KCCA uh, 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 and this government could not proceed with the, rest, with the rescue efforts overnight. I was there at midnight. People were still crying under the garbage. 
Because the first, in the first rescue efforts, people were following up, those who were knocking up and they were digging those particular spots. The police and the militants chased us away. They chased us away and I've been telling them and the minister that allow these locals to point at their houses. Maybe when you dig it there, you can save some remaining lives. It has not happened. Let us speak uh, and, and colleagues. These are also human. What we had is, is a purported condolence message from Mr. Museveni alleging that these, these are encroachers, on their, uh, encroachers near the landfill. These are lawful owners with land titles. Majority are owners of Milo and some Bibanja owners. It is very saddening to find your people being branded encroachers after being killed by the state. Who was in charge of the landfill? Under which law do neighbors owe a duty to protect themselves against the actions of a neighbor? Reasonable speaker and colleagues, Order, honorable colleagues, let the area member of parliament, let the area member of parliament. I know emotions can run high on some of these uh, situations, but let's listen. Honorable, you can try to conclude. Right honorable speaker and colleagues, our, our immediate prayer is for government to initiate rescue efforts day and night because these are lives. We don't want to say we have lost all the hope, much as our hope has reduced. But at least rescue efforts can go on day and night. In the, on Saturday, the minister was there and KCC and other agencies. They promised to, to start co to commence rescue efforts overnight and pray to offer light. I, I, I heard the prime minister, the state minister, the minister thanking KCCA. They brought trucks for lights. When I, 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 I went to the site around midnight, the generator for the truck, the generator for the lights was not working and functional. And neither was anyone standing by to even operate the machines. We are demanding that this rescue effort must be done day and night. Equally, for a number of our people who were injured during this crisis, we had of condolences and, and support of 200, now 1 million. In this country, where can you get medication with a lost wound? Or a, or a lost, a, a lost, where can you get medication at 1 million? Let's talk about treating our people fully. Equal when it comes to resettlement, it is, it is true. There are some few houses which are closer to the landfill and indeed they are at risk. But we are saying, as we discussed the question of resettling them in the tent, our people who are their own houses and land won't be resettled in the tents for the rest of their lives. We want a comprehensive approach that would talk about how do you compensate these people, where are they going. They cannot be taken to stay in the tents forever. These are people, some with families. When it comes to equal those in the tents, the tragedy befell on Saturday. The whole of Saturday, they had promised with the Red Cross and others to put a tent. Red Cross speaker and colleagues, the tent was placed in the night. Most of the victims had to seek shelter from neighbors. I was there overnight. And even when the tent was, was, was raised, the Minister for Disaster had promised that they were going to offer beddings, uh, beddings and other, other items. They were only delivered yesterday, some of them. Just yesterday, and it be fair on Saturday. Where is the preparedness of government? Because these are, these, are, these are lives. And that's why the minister is mentioning a small number. Because people don't see hope in going in that, that would be tent. They don't see any hope because by Saturday, even when they raised the tents, there was nothing inside the tent. Even the toilet came seven hours later, the, the portable toilet. And these are lives you are putting in a tent. Where is the preparedness and the agency in rescuing and supporting these people? Reasonable speaker and, and colleagues, as I conclude, when it comes to the rescue efforts, part of the concerns of the locals is the security organs brought in their own people in plain clothes who, are, who they are working with. Those same people working with security broke 
the rightful residents, including myself as the area MP initially, until it had to be the intervention of the minister and the IGP. And we are telling them we are the people who know. Indeed, the prime minister was embarrassed on the ground when she inquired from one of the people working with the police and that person could not identify the, the relative he's looking for. There is, a, there is a possibility that there are some people who are pressed to own bodies not belonging to themselves and want to understand what is being done at the mortuary to ensure that the bodies are handed to rightful relatives. Because there's a likelihood and, the same, and, and, and even those who are right I interacted with one of the family who, which claimed that they were being charged to retrieve their body from the city mortuary. I brought it to the attention of the Minister for Kampala and the Prime Minister on the ground. We need a clear position and commitment that these people are going to be supported, compensated, and get their bodies for free. It is KCC responsibility and government. Government must come out open and own up this saga and make a promise to compensate and fully compensate these people. As I, as I conclude, right honorable speaker and colleagues, and I will conclude this time. We are very sad. We are very sad as people of, of Chadondo East. We are very sad as the people of Chitez and Rusanya. But I want to bring to your attention, right honorable speaker and colleagues, that a number of these victims are from your areas. Actually, when I was on the ground overnight, I saw a family of 20 stranded, stranded outside. Covering themselves with, with, with covering themselves, and I, 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 I got interested and inquired. They told me they had travelled from Mumbai. Another family had travelled from from Guru, and these people are saying they are, that their the family members are still missing, buried by the sun. Let me speak and colleagues. When the prime minister visited uh, uh, Lusania yesterday, I brought to their attention that there are, some of these families are not from here. But they, are, they have come to identify their, their, their bodies. The, the rescue exercise has delayed. How do we support them? The Prime Minister said we cannot support them. These are your people. They are there waiting for bodies of their relatives. They traveled from your areas. They don't have a house. Are you pleaded with the Prime Minister that allow some of these people, I did, you screen them and allow them to shelter in the tent because they are staying outside. When you see them, you may think they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are residents of our area. No, they traveled from your own areas, you people here, you members here. When I, I brought the attention of the Prime Minister. Uh, on, 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 I know it's very emotional and all that, okay? But ju just conclude, please. Use one minute to conclude that. Way. My prayer uh, and, and my request is that even these people who traveled from distant areas, must be supported. The Prime Minister rejected that proposal with the ministers, and I'm bringing it to your attention because they, they travel from your own areas. Who is going to support them? They are staying outside because the rescue effort is ongoing. They haven't received their own bodies. What should they do? And then last day, the, the locals are re requested to be allowed to identify positions of their own houses, much as they were chased from the landfill. But they are saying they know the exact location of their houses. They wanted to support and assist the police we requested that at least they identify one relative, one, one, one family member at go. They take that, that member down to identify the location of their house. Because these ex excavators are going step by step. They may take months to reach. There are even some KCCA workers who are trapped in a KCCA small truck. They are still under, under the garbage. But the KCCA is not speaking about it. They, there are some KCCA workers who are operating a smaller machine. They were also covered. The distance from, 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 from where the excavators have reached to where they are is still long. And the coverage is, is not even a quarter so far in terms, of the, in terms of the coverage. We must make all efforts and advocacy that the rescue is speeded up and, and, and we support our people. It is very saddening, Grand Honorable Speaker and colleagues. Thank you. Now, Honorable uh, Mwada, we join you and the rest of the community to pray for the souls of our colleagues and whatever can be done to support